Okay, so in this video we want to look at um, solving quadratic equations using the general quadratic formula. Um, in the previous video when we were solving quadratic inequalities, we came across a, across a quadratic that doesn't fa didn't factorise and I said that my preference is always, if it won't factorise, I then solve it using the quadratic formula. Okay, I never complete the square and then solve. If I'm trying to solve a quadratic, to me completing the square isn't a method for solving. You can, but you wouldn't, you would use the quadratic formula. Okay. And the reason for that is the quadratic formula is a shortcut for completing the square and then solving. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go through that. We're going to complete the square for the most general possible quadratic equa equation and solve it to come up with the quadratic equation so that you can see the quadratic formula so that you can see that actually all the formula is doing is completing the square and then solving but actually if I can remember the formula I don't need to complete the square okay having said that if you don't remember the formula by all means complete the square and use that but it is um, you know to my mind not the most efficient way to solve the equation okay so as I said essentially all the quadratic formula is that I'm only, we're only going to do this once because once we've done it we've then got a general rule for the solutions for this equation which is the most general possible quadratic a times x squared plus b times x plus c if a if c is zero we've got a number times x squared plus a number times x if b is zero we've got a number times x squared plus a number okay a can't be zero then it's not a quadratic it's a linear function okay so let's focus on completing the square and then we'll focus on solving so when we're completing the square, we must remember that we can only complete the square for a monic quadratic. And this is not a monic quadratic because we've got a times x squared. So the first thing we must do is factor out that a, even if it means creating fractions. Now, in this case, because I'm solving equal to zero, I don't need to factor out the a and keep it there and worry about it later. I can divide both sides of the equation by a. And the equation becomes x squared plus b divided by ax plus c divided by a equals zero. Okay, now we want to complete the square, which means we want to create our perfect square, which means working out what do we have to add in there to make the perfect square. Okay, so we remember that what we need to do is halve and square that. Okay, so half of b over a is b over 2a okay and then we square it so we get b over 2a squared okay so it's going to be half of b over a all squared which is b on 2a squared so we're going to add in b over 2a squared and we're going to take away b over 2a squared I know this is a bit ugly, but at this point, year 11 methods, you should be capable of, of doing this algebra actually, but certainly of following it. I'm not asking you to do it. I'm asking you to follow along. You don't need to do it ever again. The whole point is we're generating a formula that then we can use. Okay, so now our first three terms here, that's our perfect square, okay? And it is x, remember it's half of this number, so half of b on a, positive b on a, which is positive b on 2a. So it's x plus b on 2a all squared. And then we've still got these bits out here. Um, so let's tidy that up a bit first before we do anything else. So we're going to have net minus, let's expand out that b on 2a all squared. So that's b squared on 4a squared if we square everything in that bracket. And then we're going to have plus, let's get a common denominator while we're here. The common denominator is going to be 4a squared. So we've multiplied the denominator of c over a by 4a. And so we do the same to the numerator. So we get 4ac equals 0. Okay, I'm actually not going to... We're getting trouble with the negative potentially here. I'm actually not going to combine those together, although I've got them ready to do so. I'm going to add them to the other side first. Because now what we want to focus on is we want to solve for x. Okay, we're trying to find, we're trying to solve this equation. Okay, um, so let's get rid of these. I've got nothing to do with x. Let's get rid of them onto the other side. So we're going to have x plus b on 2a. Oh, sorry, all squared. And that's now going to be equal to, we're going to add b squared on 4a squared. And we're going to need to take away 4ac on 4a squared. 
Now let's put those together now that I've got the negative the right way around. So it's b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Now some of you who recall your quadratic formula from last year might be thinking, oh yeah, things are starting to look a bit familiar here. Okay, so again, we're focused on, we're solving for x, we're trying to get x on its own, we're adding, up, x has been added to b on 2a, and then the whole thing's been squared, so square rooting's the next thing we need to do. x plus b on 2a, um, and so when we take a square root, could be the positive or negative square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Now, if we have a square root of a fraction, you know, 3 on 4, that's the same as root 3 on root 4. And because root 4 can be simplified, we would definitely do that. So that would be root 3 on 2. In this instance, that thing there can be square rooted because square root of 4a squared is 2a. So that's quite nice. So let's deal with that. Let's not worry about the left-hand side for a minute. So we can't do anything about the numerator. We're still going to have the positive or negative square root of b squared minus 4ac. But that will all be over... 2a. Okay, we're nearly there. Focusing on, we're solving for x. Let's get x on its own, which means we now just need to subtract b on 2a. I'm going to write it at the beginning, because that's more conventionally how it's written. Negative b on 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now we've got a common denominator there, so we can write that all over the one denominator of 2a. We've got negative b and then in the second fraction, we've got plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And this is the solution. This gives the solutions to this equation. It's really important here. A lot of people, when they write out their solutions, they leave off the x equals. You're solving for x. That's what you're doing. That, that gives you the solution. So the solutions to the quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, are given by negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, the other thing that we can see here is if we go back to this line here, okay, let's focus on often why we are trying to solve this equation. If we make a quadratic equal to 0, that's going to give us the x-intercepts of that quadratic, right? So what we've found here, these are the x-intercepts, okay? If we think about the x-intercepts at this point, they're pretty ugly, okay? But if we think about how it's written here, we've got the x-intercepts are this value, negative b on 2a plus this value, and then negative b on 2a minus that same value. So if you think about plotting those out on an axis, if this is negative b on 2a, and we add the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a to that, there's one of our x-intercepts at negative b on 2a plus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. The other x-intercept is going to be negative b on 2a minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So there's my other x-intercept at negative b on 2a minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, And so what that tells us is this negative b on 2a has to be in the middle. Okay, That has to be the axis of symmetry. The vertical line with equation x equals negative b on 2a is the axis of symmetry. Now, the axis of symmetry, we don't draw on a parabola, it's not that important, but what that gives us, that gives us the x-coordinate of the turning point. If my parabola is going to have x-intercepts here and here, it has to turn with an x-coordinate of negative b on 2a. Okay, It might go this way, it might be taller and thinner than that, it doesn't matter, but it has to turn here. Okay. So what we've also learnt here is that the axis of symmetry of the graph of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c is given by the equation x equals negative b on 2a, which means that the turning point has coordinates negative b on 2a and then whatever the y-coordinate is. Once you've worked out the x-coordinate, you can sub that value in to work out the y-coordinate. Okay. Um, there's one other thing I was going to say before I moved on from that. 
Oh, yeah. So I've often said to you previously that um, you need to be careful about um, or, or don't get too bogged down in there being lots and lots of formulas to remember. Okay. Um, you know, midpoint is average of, of the two of the coordinates. You know, distance between two points is just Pythagoras' theorem. Yes, you need to know Pythagoras, but you can, you know, generate these other formulas. So, yes, I'm sort of contradicting that here by saying I think of, of the list of formulas that you should remember, you should learn by rote, the quadratic formula is one. You'll use it frequently enough um, and it assists you frequently enough that it is worth learning by rote. Having said that, if you don't remember it, you can always complete the square and then solve. But I would advocate getting to a point where you know it well enough that you don't need to use completing the square as a solving method. We use it for other reasons. We absolutely need to know how to do it, but we don't use it to solve a quadratic. Okay, let's have a look at some examples. So we want to solve each of the following for x. Okay, so a is 1, b is negative 6, c is negative 10. Okay, so 1x squared minus 6x minus 10. Identify those values. The solutions to the quadratic, as I said, a lot of people just launch into 6 plus or minus. Remember, what you've found here is what x equals when that quadratic equals 0. Okay, so this is x is equal to negative b. So here's our formula up here to refer to, negative b. So that's negative negative 6, so that's positive 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared negative 6 all squared is 36, minus 4 times a which is 1 and times c which is negative 10. All over 2 times a, 2 times 1, um, so that's just going to be 2. So we're going to have 6 plus or minus the square root of 36. Now negative 4 times 1 times negative 10 is plus 40 over 2. So we've got 6 plus or minus the square root of 76 over 2. Okay, now you're always going to have some simplifying to do. The first thing to focus on simplifying is the third. You're looking for square numbers that go into 76. Okay, 4 definitely goes into 76 because I know it goes into 36 and 40, which is how I created 76. Um, I also know it goes into 80 20 times, and 76 is just one lot of 4 less than that. So therefore, 70, root 76 is, or oh, sorry, 76 is 4 times 19, which means when I simplify the third, it is root 4, which is 2 times root 19 over 2. Okay, now that the third is simplified, I'm looking to see whether the fraction can be simplified. It's really important that we divide the entire numerator by 2, okay? You can't just do, oh, 3 and that's that. It actually, you actually need to cancel that whole thing down. So you can think of it a couple of different ways. You don't need to write out this step, but you need to be able to think about two is a common factor in the numerator, and it leaves me with three plus or minus root 19 all over two. And so I can cancel that down and I just get three plus or minus root 19, okay? Or the other way to think about it is splitting it into two fractions. So this is the same as six over two plus or minus two root 19 over two, which means it is three, which is six on two, plus or minus root 19, okay? Either way, whether you go this way or this way, it's gonna simplify to three plus or minus root 19. I'm just gonna delete that out of the way over here. Otherwise it'd be in the way for my next question. Okay, let's have a look at um, exam part B. A um, Couple of things to note, I would still say if there, are, if there are common factors, if this was six, not seven, and I could divide everything by three, and be dealing with smaller numbers in my quadratic formula, I absolutely want to do that. Similarly, these are all negative. Let's just multiply everything by negative one and deal with three x squared plus 12 x plus seven equals zero. These are equivalent equations. The solutions to this equation are the same as the solutions to this equation. So if I can solve a simpler equation, i.e. an equation without so many negatives, then I want to do that. Sorry, I wrote plus 12, not plus 12 x um, plus seven. Okay, so I'm going to use a equals positive 3, b equals positive 12, c equals positive 7, because um, that's going to be easier to work with. So solutions, x equals negative b, so negative 12, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 12 squared is 144, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 lots of a. 
Okay, so negative 12 plus or minus square root of 144 take away. Uh, 4 threes are 12 and 7 twelves are 84. Over 6. So it's negative 12 plus or minus 144 take away 84 is 60. Again, 4 goes into 60. 4 goes into 60 15 times. It's 4 times 15, which means the third simplifies to be 2 root 15. And then again, we've got a common factor of 2 here. Again, you probably don't need to write down this line, but you must make sure that you are dividing both that and that by 2 if you want to cancel down 2 out of here. Sorry, not cancel it down to 3 by dividing by 2. Okay, so you've got to think about dividing everything by 2. So when we do that, um, it's going to be negative 6 plus or minus root 15. We've divided the whole numerator by 2 over 3. Um, that's now in simplest form. Okay, yes, there's a common factor of 3 here, but there's no common factor of 3 here. 3 goes into 15, but 3 doesn't go into root 15. Okay, so that's as simple as our answers get. So they are our solutions. X equals those values. Okay, X equals these values. All right, example two. The other time the quadratic formula can be really useful is if we have unknown coefficients happening in a quadratic equation. So I can't factorize this because even if I can factors of eight that add up to negative K, I don't know what K is. So how can I know what they are? So quadratic formula is going to be the best way to go here. So A is two, B is negative K in this instance, and C is four. Okay, so X is equal to negative B, negative negative K, so that's positive K plus or minus the square root of, sorry, I'll write it out, negative k all squared, which is just positive k squared, take away 4 times a times c, all over 2a. Okay, so we're going to have k plus or minus the square root of negative k times negative k is just k squared, take away 4 times um, 2 times 4, now 4 fours are 16, um, times 2 is 32, or 4 twos are 8, times 4 is 32, regardless, you get to that, all over 4. The advantage here is, we actually can't do anything more to simplify that, okay? That isn't something all squared, let's just, a quick important reminder here, that does not equal square root of k squared minus the square root of 32, that's not how thirds work. Let me give you an example to illustrate that. We know that the square root of 25 minus 9 is the square root of 16, which is 4. What you want to do is say that the square root of 25 minus 9 is the same as the square root of 25 minus the square root of 9, which is 5 minus 3, which is 2. These are not the same thing. This is the correct way. This is not correct. Okay? You cannot just, if you've got subtraction under a third, you can't just break it up. Okay? There's brackets implied here. You need to be able to do that subtraction before you take the square root. Same thing here. We need to be able to do that subtraction, and we can't subtract 32 from k squared other than to write k squared minus 32 before we can do the square root. So we just it's going to be written like that. That's our final answer. Okay, so exercise 3H um, using the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations.